What is up, y'all? Jesse and Melissa here. And today, we are talking about a controversial subject. Wow. Not really. I mean, if you follow our channel for a while, you know our thoughts on the subject already, but we're going to try to be as unbiased as possible and list the pros and cons of boon knocking versus an RV park. And then we'll give you our thoughts quickly at the end. I agree, dear. This is a pretty terrible RV park. I mean, it's nothing fancy. Obviously, the biggest pros of staying in an RV park are that you have full hookups. You don't have to worry about power consumption, tanks filling, and you have all sorts of amenities, often like a picnic table, a fire ring, sometimes a shower house that you can go use. It's all sorts of modern conveniences that yeah. make your stay more like actually living in a house. Yeah, I mean, lots of times there'll be like a dog run where you could just let your dog run off leash. Mm -hmm. Lots of times you'll have a concrete pad so it's easy to level, stuff like that. So that's pretty nice if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, maybe even a camp store or a place where you can buy ice or firewood. Lots of times RV parks are generally located closer to cities, which is great if you want to do activities, you want to go to downtown, you want to get dinner, you want to run groceries. There's a lot more conveniences because you are closer to whatever town you're staying to normally. Not always guaranteed, but a lot of the time you're closer in town rather than being out in the boonies. Almost every campground and RV park is going to be way easier to access than any boondocking spot. You're not going to be in a situation where you have to off-road your camper down a long road to get to your spot because most of them are paved or most of them are, you know, pretty well managed. Yeah. So they're easy to get into and out of. We will say that RV parks can be great to meet other RVers. We've met a lot of people uh, in the past especially when we're not boondocking as much obviously in an RV park. Um, like I remember in Texas, there was a lot of great couples we met. Mm -hmm. um, we were using the pool and it's very easy to just kind of talk to people. The same with the gym. We used a gym, which is another nice amenity that a lot of RV parks have. So meeting people can be easier if you're at an RV park, which is a big pro. Now we're gonna move on to all of the cons about staying in RV parks or campgrounds. The biggest one is that they can get really expensive. So, you know, an average rate would be $30 to $50 a night, sometimes more, sometimes less. But if you're doing $30 a night and staying at a campground or RV park at that price for every night of the year, that adds up to like $10,000. Yes. That's a that lot of is money. really expensive. And we know that there are cheaper parks. You can, depending on the area, if it's not desirable, you can get a park for a few hundred dollars a month but we're just going off averages. And obviously if you're living this lifestyle, everybody does it for different reasons. Some people are doing the exploring, the traveling. Some people are just retired and they're just chilling. So whatever your desire is, I mean, your RV park might kind of go, your rate is gonna fluctuate to like what you're looking for. So this is a really big thing for me and we've experienced it quite a few times. Your neighbors can be extremely loud in an RV park and they can be extremely close to you. I personally have felt claustrophobic in some RV parks, not all of them, but some of them. Mm -hmm. And then also you're gonna have to be very aware of the seasons because a lot of seasonal areas will get super busy and you might not be able to get reservations. Speaking of reservations, an RV park takes a lot more planning to book than boondocking. You have to plan way in advance, depending on the area. Like RV parks in Florida, if you're gonna be wintering there, you're gonna have to book that out like a year in advance. And we just don't like to plan that far in advance. It's a big con, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna move on to the pros of our preferred method of camping, and that is boondocking. Number one pro, the freedom. Oh. Oh. It's free! <laughs> it's free and you have freedom! So, we're just gonna say both of those because I thought she was gonna say it was free. We're gonna talk about both of those. So, 
it's free. It's free, completely um, free. Most places you can camp up to 14 days, depending where you're camping, sometimes 10, sometimes seven, sometimes five. Mm -hmm. But it's normally free or very, very cheap for a little permit. Now the freedom, you don't have to book. You Most <laughs> of the time you don't have to book anything. You can just show up, find yourself a nice spot and just get set up and just enjoy your day. You don't have to think months on ahead planning stuff out, freedom and flexibility, and frugality. The other thing that we love the most about boondocking is that you're out in nature. The views are gonna be better than in a campground or RV park, and you just get to enjoy like beautiful, expansive views, and I mean, really, does it get any better than that? Another big pro is the fact that you can choose your neighbors to a certain extent. Imagine booking a campground for a month, getting somebody that you absolutely do not like being beside, and then not being able to switch your reservation. So if you go out boondocking and you you spend a few nights there and you're like, oh, like this guy's really loud or whatever, I don't like this or I don't like that, you can just move. Like you don't have to think about it, you could just move. And then also that kind of, it's kind of a catch 22, but lots of times you can choose to be closer to town or further from town. There are some boondocking spots that you can find that can be close, they might be more crowded, or you can go further out. So in general, the big theme is freedom of choice, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest con for most people when it comes to boondocking is that you need to provide your own power source, whether that's a generator or whether it is a solar setup for your RV. Which can be expensive. Exactly, and you're gonna be, need to be mindful of your power usage and your tank capacities, how much fresh water you have, how much space you have in your gray tank and your black tank, because once you run out of fresh water and you run out of space in those tanks, you gotta go. Time to move. A big con about boondocking is there's potential to damage your rig or your tow vehicle. You might get stuck in sand. You might get a tree branch scraping your roof. There's a lot more variables that come into play with boondocking. We have had, in the past, we've gone really far down a dirt road to this spot that we found on Google Maps or whatever, or Campendium or one of these sites, and it's taken. And so now you've wasted time, you've wasted fuel, you've rattled your rig on the graded dirt road, and that's no fun. Yeah, and you're never guaranteed a spot when it comes to boondocking, so that can be a downside for many people. So there are a few ways to mitigate this, but lots of times we've heard and we've experienced that the inside of your rig can get very dirty. Let's say it's kind of warm out and you have some windows open, it's nice, a big gust of wind comes, or mm -hmm. an off-road vehicle goes close by your camp, you just get dust everywhere. Like your couches will just have dust all over them. And then tracking dirt in and out. You can put a mat out, it helps a little bit. And then it's the two of us plus two dogs and one's really big. So he's always coming in, coming out. And then if it happens to rain, oh man. Rain while boondocking can be tough because the inside of the rig is just dirty and you have to just live with it until you move on to your next spot or just clean it very frequently. It goes without saying that with boondocking, you don't have trash service available like you would in a campground or RV park. So you have to be responsible for your own trash and putting it in your truck or wherever you're gonna store it safely away from animals and other little critters. And then I have to go into town and actually dispose of it properly. Yeah, and wind as well. Like lots of times you gotta make sure stuff's not gonna blow away because we see that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Another thing to be aware of as well with boondocking, we don't experience it too much, um, but it can be crowds. There's seasonal areas, especially in super popular areas where spots will get taken quickly, it'll be busy, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like we laid out the pros and cons of each pretty well. Obviously you guys know that we are huge, huge, huge boondockers. We love the freedom, we love the flexibility, we love the price but we wanna know what you guys think. And if there's anything we left out, please make sure you let us know in the comments because we're curious. We have done RV parks in certain areas and we've enjoyed them, but there's just something about the freedom of boondocking. So let us know down in the comments. I actually just thought of something that we forgot. Oh gosh. So with boondocking areas, if they get too crowded, they can get closed down because they get overrun. So that's a con? That's a con. Yeah, I guess so. That's a downside. So that's something you have to watch out for too, is to take care of the land and use the land properly and not 
be trampling all over trees and bushes. Bonus tip. Gotta be careful. Like always, thanks so much for watching.